Kyron Williams last year, 228 rush attempts, 1,144 yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, uh, 32 receptions on 48 targets for 206 and three touchdowns through the air. Thoughts on Kyron Williams? Durability, maybe, maybe a little concerned about that. But the fact he's always on the field, I love it. And I know they've drafted Blake Corum. And I definitely, I'm definitely intrigued by the handcuff here of Blake Corum in case Kyron goes down. But the usage and his availability of of when he is playing and his snap share percentage is unlike anything that we see for any other back that we've talked about this year. No one else even comes close to it. The ne- I mean, you start touching, you know, if they're on the field for 60% of the snaps, normally that's good enough. He was on the field for over 80. Like, so it speaks to his conditioning last year, and I think he holds that up again, right? I think he knows that's a benefit to him. If he's not tired, if he's not gassed and can keep pushing through, he's good. I like the usage. That's why I like Kyron Williams. I know that there's an injury risk there, but I feel like, you know, there is with any running back. Like, any running back is just one crazy play away. First on the scene, right? Like, last year was a couple breakouts for some L.A. Rams players with him and Puka. Both were just, like, revelations, right, with Kyron Williams. Uh, Twelve career touchdowns, all of those were last year. I, I, I like that he is a touchdown-a-game guy. I like that he's five yards a carry. Um I like that he's somewhat involved, uh, rather involved in the um, the passing game. And I say t- a touchdown a game, it's, it's over a touchdown a game when you work in uh, receiving work there. Um, but again, the, the 12 games is kind of annoying, right? Like that's, it's not, reliability is not something that you should have to worry about with your first or second round pick. Like reliability should be, um, something that you, you you just don't think about with, with that pick. So it, it puts you at a at a different spot. If you draft a Kyron Williams, if you draft a Devon Achen, you're going to have to defend against the time missed, right? Um, and I just that's, – that's how your draft is going to have to go. You're going to have to think about that for the rest of your draft is how am I going to defend against the – four or five games where I don't have this guy available to. I don't know when I'm, when I'm staring down the, uh, the Kyron choice in the second round, I, I typically don't have a problem just smashing. Yes. And moving on uh, Kyron Williams, right? Like, yes, he was, he was a little bit banged up there um, last season, but when he was on the field, um, had a higher snap percentage share than, than anybody else at the running back position, right? Even out snapping Christian McCaffrey in a percentage, uh, percentage on the deal, right? He was 82% Christian McCaffrey, 81% season long type of snap share percentage, right? Like there's a lot to be said about a guy that's on the field uh, when he's out there. And not only was he on the field, but he was getting touches, right? Averaging over 20 touches a game in, uh, in a lot of those, those situations there. So um, yeah, I, I can understand the hesitation with that one, but um, yeah, any more with, with running backs, it, it just seems like you're, you know, for the most part, if you're drafting a running back and you're drafting a high-end running back or even a mid-running back or a low-end running back, that the the majority of the time they're, they're going to probably miss two, three, four games throughout the season. So uh, that that's something that you just kind of almost got to plan for and, and, and uh, adjust uh, on that one.